Taxiways, not runways, your news update, and we talk spirits on this edition of Arbitrage News Weekend, starting right now. Hello and welcome to Arbitrage News Weekend for March 11th, 2023. I'm Joshua Stark. Today, the Federal Aviation Administration announced that they have successfully installed technology in 43 major airports across the United States to prevent planes from landing on taxiways by mistake. The system software predicts when an aircraft is heading toward a taxiway and notifies air traffic controllers immediately to prevent any accidents. The measure was recommended by the National Transportation Safety Board following a close call at San Francisco International Airport in 2017 where an Air Canada jet almost collided with four other planes on a taxiway. While the FAA is still considering the recommendation to require systems that alert pilots if they are not aligned with runways, commercial airplanes at major airports already have equipment to help them with their landings. In February, American employers added 311,000 jobs, a substantial number, albeit fewer than January's significant gain. This figure is sufficient to maintain pressure on the Federal Reserve to aggressively raise interest rates to combat inflation. Although the unemployment rate increased from its 53-year low of 3.4 to 3.6%, indicating that all, not all job seekers were successful, the government's report on Friday confirms that the job market remains fundamentally healthy with many employers eager to recruit new staff. Fed Chair Jerome Powell told Congress that if the economy continues to demonstrate strength and inflation remains high, the Fed is likely to increase its rate hikes. A robust job market usually prompts businesses to raise pay and subsequently pass on their increased labor costs to customers, resulting in higher prices. February's substantial job growth demonstrates that hiring continues to strengthen this year after a slight dip in late 2022. House leaders have warned that consequences of a security breach on a health insurance marketplace used by members of Congress could be significant. This breach could potentially expose sensitive personal information of legislators, their families, and their staff members, putting thousands of people at risk. The organization that manages the marketplace, DC HealthLink, has confirmed that an unspecified number of its customers have been affected by the breach. It has also stated that it is working with law enforcement to determine the extent of the damage and is offering identity theft services to those affected. This Sunday, viewers may face a tough decision between finding out if Joel and Ellie reach the doctors in Last of Us or if Michelle Yeoh wins the Best Actress Oscar. The season finale of the popular HBO show coincides with the live telecast of the Oscars on ABC. While it's possible to watch both, viewers will have to choose which event to prioritize in real time. The Oscars begin at 8 p.m. Eastern, while The Last of Us airs at 9 p.m. One option is to start the night watching the Oscars, switch over to The Last of Us, and return for the last hour of the ceremony when the biggest awards are typically announced. However, this plan comes with the risk of missing any unexpected, exciting moments from the Oscars. Alternatively, Viewers who stick with the Oscars risk spoilers on the fate of Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal's characters in The Last of Us. More after this on Arbitrage News. I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you prevent wildfires. Dude, I've got this. I've been camping since I was five years old. But I am a camping influencer. You know what? I'll bet you five bucks. Assistant Smokey, what is the best way to put out a campfire? To put out a campfire, drown with water, stir, drown again. Then make sure the fire is out cold by feeling with the back of your hand. Wait, really? I'll take the five bucks. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ag Council. This week's Arbitrage blog includes, I I mean, Georgia has the power, JetBlue Blues, and we talk investing in spirits. All this and more in this week's Arbitrage blog, available now at arbitragetrade.com and .org. Now let's go to the president and CEO of Arbitrage, Mr. Royce Wells. Royce. You're lucky my falsetta is broken, but I've got the power. Ah. (laughs) 
and it falls apart just like that. Just like that. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that it's not falling apart in Georgia. Georgia now has a newly reactive nuclear reactor. What do we Try mean by that? that twice. Right, exactly. <laughs> what do we mean by that? Well, Georgia started successfully started a nuclear reaction inside of a nuclear reactor uh, located in Burke County, Georgia. The stage is called initial criticality, and it's when the nuclear fission process has started splitting atoms. So it's more of it's more of a start, and it's the first start of a new uh, nuclear plant in about seven years in the United States. So that's it's, hot, right? Right really hot the byproduct is heat right correct yeah. you, you were going there weren't you exactly okay all right so so tva started uh started getting uh splitting atoms at a nuclear reactor in tennessee um about seven years ago that was the last nuclear reactor and uh and georgia has started doing that uh actually yesterday was when they did it we we're, we're taping on the 8th it was the yes it was yesterday oh excellent when that started so um currently georgia power uh serves right around 2.6 million customers and um uh it's gonna it's gonna help out a ton um why don't they do this more often well uh, there's an emphasis on this. It, it's on the lower cost of the cost spectrum as far as nuclear power is concerned, operations, maintenance, fuel costs. But it's properly built. It has oh, to be yeah, you properly have to, built. To code and everything, because you're playing with nuclear power. You don't want an oops. We don't need a Marvin the Martian episode in Georgia. I am not going to talk about my Illudium PU-36 Explosive Space Modulator. Exactly. So you're going to properly build it, and so, we won't have to talk about it. Yeah, we, we emphasize that because it usually takes around 5 to 10 years, and it's pretty expensive to build a nuclear power plant. There's a reason why nobody stood one up in the last seven years. It's pretty expensive to properly build a nuclear power plant, and anybody born in the 1980s can tell you about what happens when you don't properly build uh, a nuclear plant. Chernobyl. Just mention the word exactly. There Chernobyl. Yep. Uh, Chernobyl, of course, uh, had a nuclear accident back in the 80s and has, has you know, is still uh, suffering the repercussions of that. He yep. still and will be for decades to come. Absolutely, absolutely. And it also has a smaller carbon footprint than, say, renewable sources like solar farms and wind farms. So, oh, wow. so something to compete with solar. All right, let's right. go. More after this on arbitrage. Nice. Hey, wouldn't it be great if life came with a remote control? You know, you could hit pause when you needed to, or hit rewind. Like that time you knocked down that wasp's nest. Uh-oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome. But pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Ugh! I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? To protect her home and family in a disaster, Karen was willing to wade through water, mud, and insurance paperwork. 
Yeah, I can do this. You go, Karen. By simply understanding and updating what her insurance covers and doesn't cover now, she'll be better prepared no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. The cost of renting an apartment is easing after skyrocketing in recent years, though it remains painfully high for many Americans. The U.S. median rent rose 2.4% in January from a year earlier to $1,942, the lowest annual increase since June 2021, according to data from Rent, which tracks listings for apartment and rental houses. The median rent peaked in August at 2053 while the annual rate of growth topped out at nearly 18% in March last year, according to Rent. On a monthly basis, January's national median rent was down about 2% from December, its fourth decline in five months, the company said. After surging in 2021 and most of 2022, rent growth has begun to moderate amid slowing demand and rising competition from new apartment construction, which has put pressure on landlords to ease rent increases. It's the inventory, the fact that rents have been so high, a lot of people have been uncertain about the economy and just staying put, not moving around as much, said J John Leckie, a researcher at Rent. Even with rent growth easing, the sharp increases in recent years have squeezed tenants' budgets by gobbling up a bigger share of their income. The national average rent-to-income ratio reached 30% in the fourth quarter, according to Moody's Analytics. The ratio was the highest it's been in more than 20 years. Moody's has been tracking it. Households that pay more than 30% or more of their income on rent are considered cost-burdened by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. As the disparity between rent growth and income growth widens, Americans' wallets feel financial distress as wage growth trails rent growth, Moody's economists wrote in a January report. The trajectory of rent growth becomes far less uniform when looking at specific metropolitan areas. In many metros in the southeast and midwest, rents have kept rising sharply amid a surge in people moving there from the west and northeast, where housing tends to be more expensive. The median rent in the raleigh Cary, North Carolina metro area soared 22.5% in January from a year earlier, while in Cleveland area, Ohio, it vaulted 17.5% according to rent. Among the metros where median rents fell most in January from a year earlier, Phoenix, Mesa, Chandler, Arizona down 6.7% and Oklahoma City down 6.3%. It's unlikely rents nationally will fall sharply as demand for housing remains strong and high mortgage rates that knock the for-purchase housing market into a skid are forcing many would-be home buyers to continue renting. Nearly one in two U.S. adults have high blood pressure. That's why it's important to self-monitor your blood pressure in four easy-to-remember steps. It starts with a monitor. Be next to talk to your doctor about your blood pressure numbers. Get down with your blood pressure. Self-monitoring is power. Visit ManagerBP.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the American Heart Association, and the American Medical Association. In partnership with the Office of Minority Health and Health Resources and Services Administration. To protect her home and family in a disaster, Karen was willing to wade through water, mud, and insurance paperwork. Yeah, I can do this. You go, Karen! By simply understanding and updating what her insurance covers and doesn't cover now, she'll be better prepared no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe. And it's the best way to protect that legacy. You know what? We should make an emergency communication plan. That way we're ready this year. At my dorm, we have emergency kits for earthquakes and wildfires, but I'm sure there's something more local I can send you with the link. Okay, smart.
protect your legacy. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan for the tools and tips you need to start your emergency preparedness plan today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Royce, no secret around here that I just absolutely love to fly, you know? Oh, yeah? I mean, I... I, I, I believe I can fly. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's another matter entirely. <laughs> but, oh, but, but... All song lyrics, all song lyrics. You know, uh, airline flights have been a little bit... They've been a little bit iffy the last few years, you know, with COVID. Lots of cancellation, lots, lots of, can- of moving. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And JetBlue Airways uh, is trying to trying to move up in the world, really. They're they're a low cost airline and yeah. and uh, they they've decided to buy another low cost airline, Spirit Airlines, for three point eight billion dollars. And to say that they're a small airline and they're paying that much for it, yeah. That's kind of saying something. That isn't it? that's saying a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the Justice Department is saying that uh, that that merger, that particular merger, would especially hurt cost-conscious travelers who depend on Spirit to find cheaper options than they could find on JetBlue or the Big Four, like we were talking about. But what about Allegiant? There are other small airlines as well. There are. There so are. So what's the problem here? Here's the thing, right? So competition getting too fierce, you know. Mm. Okay, <laughs> so so Merrick Garland, the the attorney general, uh, said that that this is a sign of the importance that the administration places on stopping further consolidation in the airline industry. Have you, by any chance, done any research about about airlines and things in the sixties and seventies? Not particularly in that th- those decades, no. Well, I actually have. I oh, actually why have. am I not surprised? All right. Tell me, what have you learned? Do you know that on uh, things like Pan Am 747s, there was a f- stupid piano bar in the thing? Oh, that's beautiful. A piano bar. Oh, wait. I, I forgot. I, I have seen stuff where right. planes used to be, I mean, the thing. Planes it used to be the form of travel for... And luxury, yeah, decked out to people. the nines. Now, today, you have the same 747s, which, by the way, they're retiring. Oh. Um, you have the same 747s that have been crammed full of seats, and it's just not a great experience for anybody. It's like herding cattle onto a truck, and then all of a sudden it gets up in the air. I mean, it's... Yeah, hey, it's yeah. it's not a cool experience at all. Might I suggest always getting an exit aisle? <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> a little uh, extra leg room, so you know why not? Yeah. So so JetBlue and Spirit are trying to get together. They're trying to figure out uh, what's going on, and, and and Spirit is the nation's biggest ultra low cost carrier. That's what the that's what the 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 deal is. Uh, they feel like JetBlue's plan would eliminate a unique competition that Spirit provides and about half of the ultra-low-cost airline seats in the industry. Uh, here's the thing, man. You know, and, and, and don't get me wrong with this. I think, that, I think that there are some interesting things that we can look at when it comes to the airline industry. Yeah. But any... Anytime a, a company gets with another company and tries to make themselves better, it's going to be for the people that we. Uh, it's going to be for for the people uh, to to benefit from. I think. Yeah, I think it, it would be a good chance for JetBlue to grow and Spirit to grow as well. Let's go. More after this. I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you prevent wildfires. Dude, I've got this. I've been camping since I was five years old. But I am a camping influencer. You know what? I'll bet you five bucks. Assistant Smokey, what is the best way to put out a campfire? To put out a campfire, drown with water, stir, drown again. Then make sure the fire is out cold by feeling with the back of your hand. Wait, really? I'll take the five bucks. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. The dad joke. <laughs> Corny, groan-worthy, 
but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Even if you haven't tried artificial intelligence tools that can write essays and poems or conjure new images on command, chances are the companies that make your household products are already starting to do so. Mattel, for example, has put the AI generator Dolly to work by having it come up with new ideas for new Hot Wheels toy cars. New used car seller CarMax is summarizing thousands of customer reviews with the same generative AI technology that powers the popular chatbot ChatGPT. Meanwhile, Snapchat is bringing a chatbot to its messaging service, and the grocery delivery company Instacart is integrating ChatGPT to answer customers' food questions. Coca-Cola plans to use generative AI to help create new marketing content, and while the company has detailed exactly how it plans to deploy the technology, the move reflects the growing pressure on businesses to harness tools that many of their employees and consumers are already trying on their own. We must embrace the risk, said Coca-Cola CEO James Quincy in a recent video announcing a partnership with startup OpenAI, maker of both Dolly and ChatGPT, through an alliance led by the consulting firm Bain. We need to embrace those risks intelligently, experiment, build on those experiments, drive scale, but not taking those risks is a hopeless point of view to start from. Indeed, some AI experts warn that businesses should carefully consider potential harms to customers, society, and their own reputations before rushing to ch embrace ChatGPT and similar products in the workplace. I want people to think deeply before deploying this technology, said Claire Leibowitz of the Partnership on AI, a nonprofit group founded and sponsored by the major tech providers that recently released a set of recommendations for companies producing AI-generated synthetic imagery, audio, and other media. They should play around and tinker, but we should also think, what purpose are these tools serving in the first place? Some companies have been experimenting with AI for a while. Mattel revealed its use of OpenAI's image generator in October as a client of Microsoft, which has a partnership with OpenAI that enables it to integrate technology into Microsoft's cloud computing platform. But it wasn't until the November 30th release of OpenAI's ChatGPT, a free public tool, that widespread interest in generative AI tools began seeping into workplaces and executive suites. ChatGPT really sort of brought it home how powerful they were, said Eric Boyd, a Microsoft executive who leads the, its AI platform. That's changed the conversation in a lot of people's minds where they get it on a deeper level. My kids use it and so do my parents. There is reason for caution, however. While text generators like ChatGPT and Microsoft's Bing Chatbot can make the process of writing emails, presentations, and marketing pitches faster and easier, they also have a tendency to confidently present misinformation as fact. Image generators trained on a huge trove of digital art and photography have raised copyright concerns from the original creators of those works. For companies that are really in the creative industry, if they want to make sure that they have copyright protection for those models, that's still an open question, said attorney Anna Grissel of the law firm Debevoice and Plimpton, which advises businesses on how to use AI. Back after this on Arbitrage News. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo. Do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. What is dedication? My daughter is biological and my son is adopted. I love them both so much. 
from the morning when you wake up to putting them to bed at night and every moment in between. I think a parent's job is to protect our children, but also prepare them for the world so they become good, kind human beings. That's dedication. Find out more at fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. We talk about non-traditional investments here. Sometimes, you know, sometimes collectibles, sometimes cars, sometimes Lego. Yeah, and it's Lego, not Legos. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I had to correct myself. <laughs> so uh, just want to make sure, you know, I don't get blasted by the Lego aficionado. There you, you know. go. How about bourbon? I like bourbon. Why not collect it? Who doesn't like bourbon? Matter um, of fact. Can I invest in that? Actually, you can. In my belly? <laughs> you can. Here's the thing. You don't want to put it in your belly, though. You don't want to keep it, keep it on the shelf. And make sure that you keep that sucker for a while. Now, okay. premium spirits like like bourbon and like whiskey and that sort of thing, whiskeys and and uh, uh, things like that. You know, um, what's the what's the stuff from uh, Scotland and uh, mead? I don't know. Anyway, oh no, you asked for. I'm like, hey, they 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 will literally try to ferment anything. So, honey, it is. True. Let's go. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, distillers have up production in the last few years to make sure that uh, to make sure that that demand has been met. But uh, whiskey and things like that, it has to age years and sometimes even decades. And scarcity has kind of kind of made the market just a little bit crazy. Hey, if you want something that's smooth, you want something that's buttery and has a little bit of an oaky taste, that's a good bourbon. Well, for example, uh, Pappy Van Winkle. And that takes time. Yeah, yeah, it does. Pappy Van Winkle 23 year, uh, produced by Old Rip Van Winkle Distillery in Kentucky. Um, You know, it's just a few bottles per state. That's that's what happens, and. Wait, you're telling me 23 years to make this? 23 years. Wow. 23 years. Uh, the thing is, is that Pappy Van Winkle he just doesn't get to the average person. And if you go to bars, uh, for example, the Pappy 23 that we're talking about, yeah, could be upwards of $200 a shot. Uh, so about that Tesla tequila. Right, right. <laughs> uh, totally different, totally different, uh, different world. Um, oh, American whiskey, <laughs> American whiskey, which includes bourbon, Tennessee whiskey, and rye, rose 10.5 percent last year, reaching 5.1 billion dollars. That's nice. Revenues for makers of super premium whiskey, 141 percent over the last five years. I'm investing in the wrong things. Exactly. Let's become moonshiners, bootleggers. Back to the prohibition. Absolutely. It was like, that's a bad tub. Nope. Nope. That's not <laughs> that's a bad a tub. distillery. <laughs> so, Pappy 23, just to put it in perspective, uh, the, the price is set at $329.95. But finding it what? on the shelf, okay. finding it on the shelf could be as, as bad as trying to find Sasquatch, for example. Once again, I know someone, but we're not going to talk about their feet problem. <laughs> <laughs> Even lotteries they're trying to trying to make up for for getting coveted liquor. Um, there was a, a lottery for a chance to purchase Pappy Van Winkle. One in four thousand one hundred and fifty was the odds there. Um, I'm thinking I'm buying 4,150 lottery tickets just to make sure I get a bottle. Have a great weekend, everybody. Go to our blog to find out more. Shots. No, more shots. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC is a privately held research company. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC is solely responsible for the preparation and distribution of the contents of this podcast. The opinions offered in this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended to function as investment advice. Seek a duly licensed professional for investment advice. For more information about the informational research and services offered by Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, 